beautiful, clever, compassionate, vital and talented young men. I've seen boys who've never been to school, let alone held a pen before, learn to read and write, then lose those abilities as the trauma and reality of detention ta takes its toll. I've seen too many bandaged wrists. I've seen the scars of needle and thread pushed through young lips and you don't ever forget those scars. I've seen a young boy with no parents stagger and cough and sway his way around an IHMS clinic, terrified he was going to die alone in the room. I've held a mother as she sobbed and grieved for Omid, Faisal, Hamid and Reza, terrified for her own son long after they had been transferred out of Nauru. I've seen a suicidal young man written up on a public notice board in the processing centre as his boat number, for example AAA123, banned from IHMS until further notice. I've seen a strong, muscular teenager after he was assaulted by a guard reduced to a shivering, sh shivering childlike state, shaken by the reality that he wasn't safe at school either. I've seen three proud, dignified, articulate and exhausted young men desperate to meet with a, vis a visiting UN agency rep but terrified of the repercussions, pleading for their lives. I've seen light and hope disappear from kids' eyes. I've been in an emergency evacuation meeting where we were told that if a fire broke out in the family camp, we were to follow Wilson instructions and leave immediately because there is no fire truck, there are no fire extinguishers and there are no firefighting personnel and the tents would go up in an instant. I've seen and heard and witnessed all of this and more and I am not alone. I'm one of hundreds if not thousands of witnesses, qualified, registered professionals bound by our respective codes of conduct and ethics. We have the best interest, health, safety and development of children and families at the heart of what we do. And mandatory indefinite detention is the complete antithesis of what we do. It causes the very harm that we are bound to protect children and families from. So we wrote, wrote reports about that abuse, we documented harm, we requested investigations, we made recommendations, we made submissions to Senate inquiries, we've written to MPs and Senators, Prime Ministers and Opposition Leaders, but the inescapable truth is that mandatory indefinite detention is abuse. It is an abuse of what we as a community and country hold dear for our own children and families. It is an abuse of our professional obligations. It is against international law, it causes harm and it can be ended. It is that simple and it is that horrific. 